Yara has written a book detailing his remarkable life and he joins us in the studio now. Stan Yaram, when you good morning. good morning. Good morning to you guys. You're looking pretty flash this morning. Oh, yeah, pretty good, yeah. yeah. Launched the book last night? Yeah, had it at the gallery in St Kilda and uh, were there and just had a lot of people there, a lot of family and friends and it went off really well. Was it like a bit of history flashing before your eyes? I know, yeah. It was when people read the book to me, because I don't read, so people read it to me and I, I think to myself, geez, I've done a lot of things in that time. Mm. And it's a bit of a roller coaster ride you too. You covered good. lots of ground down and mixing with the A-list last night. It's a long way from the knock and tumble oh. Fitzroy pubs yeah. you write about. Uh, you, yeah. hang, you hung around with your dad there. T take us through those yeah. troubled years. In the Champion Hotel, the builders of Robber Roy, I'd be in the pub there and uncles would be playing pool and the sailors would walk in and, and then my dad would say to me, put your hands up, son, and I'd, be, and I'd put my hands up, I'd be uh, hitting the sailors' hands and while I'm doing that, my dad's going for his pocket and taking his wallet out and then we'd be off and we'd leave Melbourne and go up to Sydney and we'd be in Redfern, from Redfern up to, up to uh, Adelaide, uh, Whitmore Square and yep. all these sort of places. Just kept moving around all the time. That was the environment I grew up in. With, with a father that had a problem with alcohol. Mm. Yeah, that was... It, 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 it's, um, it's a tricky thing going back over that history mm. personally, isn't it? Because y you can easily tell it as a, as a humorous and, and yeah. funny tale, and no doubt there were moments of humour along the way. Yeah. But that's a rough way for a kid to grow up. Yeah, it is, but um, I didn't know any better, so that was my journey. I never went to school, so that was my school by learning of watching men in pubs, the way they, the, the way they carried on and the way they'd done their thing. But I learned a lot of loyalty and and respect and stuff like that. And yeah. it wasn't long before uh, you were overtaken by your own personal demons. You, you became an alcoholic, you had a serious yeah. problem with the drink. What was your rock bottom, Stan? Um, well, I'd, I'd, I was a binge drinker, so I'd, work for, I'd you know, drink on a Friday and a Saturday and I'd try and get well by Sunday to go to work on the Monday. And I just kept doing this for a long time. I got to the point where I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yep. I was on the corner of Holland Victoria Street. I went into this church and uh, I went out to the I just went to this church and my brother was there and some other people there doing having a meeting and there was an older guy there and he just said to me mate you know stop thinking about yourself and think about others so i walked out of the meeting i got bored to my knees on the 5th of august 1993 and whatever was in me left me and i've never had the, the craving for alcohol ever since so from that point onwards i knew i had to get out there and start helping others with the same problem and a big part of you finding your real path in life was actually reaching inside you, connecting with your history mm. and connecting to, to art mm. and the artistic vision that you clearly always had in you. Yeah. Well, I was working at a, uh, at a place, it was a rehab in St Kilda called Galley Amble and there was, a, there was a, uh, leftover canvases and stuff like that, so I was there for the weekend and I was painting these, painting the lady coming on the Monday, the art teacher, and she goes, who done this? I said, I did. She said, that's beautiful, would you like to have one? Uh, can I buy one off you? And I said, yeah. So I sold it to her and I thought, gee, there's some money mate, to be made here. <laughs> Not realising that, well, you know, that my journey sale, was going to go. Yeah, it was $120. <laughs> now they're going for a little bit more than that. You've come a long yeah, way since. But, but it's, it's not about that. It was about my journey for that time. It just got me to where I am today and I, 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 I'm glad that that all happened. What, what inspires yeah. you, Stan, when you're in front of one of these canvases, painting? Um, what inspires me? Um, just to know that it's coming f something it's coming from me from a clear spirit and a clean mm. air energy and I know it must be one of my ancestors out there are guiding me to do whatever I'm doing and when I finish that painting I know it's going to go to a person that connects to it um, so it, that I get a real kick out of that I don't have to get a kick out of alcohol or, yep. or anything like that anymore I can get a kick out of my art and my culture. So Stan how have you made sure that Aboriginal artists have got their due when it comes to the work that's sold because we know that it's mm. an area that's been rife with rip-offs, uh, mm. rife, uh, rife with people being um, mistreated and just mm. sort of used as factories to churn out mm. often sometimes mm. fake works. Mm -hmm. How have you made sure that the money's gone where it's need to go and, and artists have got their due? Mm -hmm. Well I'm an Aboriginal artist and I know what it's like for that sort of thing to happen and I was in Alice Springs was doing a film up there called Welcome to Warp Warp and I seen one experience I had in there with um, this Aboriginal guy in the gallery trying to sell his art and the, and the gallery owner looked at him and went, I'll be with you in a minute, like that, sort of brushed him off like he was nothing. And I looked at him and I said, brother, how much do you want for it? And he goes, $300. So I met him at the front, I bought it off him for $300. I said, one day, brother, I'll come back and I'll buy all your art up here. And I did and I've continued to do that. Um, it's an Aboriginal owned gallery and, uh, Aboriginal -owned, and it's run uh, by an Aboriginal people, like our, our own people. Um, but I just like to be the front man of Aboriginal art to get it out there to the wider community so when I'm explaining it to people and they connect to it, that's where I'm getting my, my buzz from that area, from, from doing that.
Yeah. What's the market like for Aboriginal art at the moment, Stan? It's been pretty good for me. I've been doing it for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. And in the last 10 years, more Australian people buy Aboriginal art than anyone else in the world. Right. Yeah, and but it used to be more proud. people from overseas? Mostly oh. overseas. It used to be like okay. America and, and Germany, places like that, and, and Italy. Um, but now it's the Australian people that are buying it. And today I just want to let people know, the viewers, that um, I'm very proud to be an Australian because um, it's, it's you guys that are embracing your culture as well. And that's why we've got the, you know, the, the, the NADOC and NADOC week and the, mm. you know, with Sir Doug Nicholson with the footy you know, and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And you know, with Kevin Shetty, what he does and all that. All those people are putting it all in. Even what you guys are doing today, talking about what we're with this book and everything, it's getting it out there to, to the wider community and hopefully that the people read it and, and get something from it. A big issue that's being talked about, of course, is uh, the, the dismissal by the Prime Minister of the Uluru Statement from the Heart, which was to be um, a, a real declaration and recognition of, of, of Indigenous Australia mm. in our Parliament, in our Constitution. Mm. What do you think should happen in terms of true reconciliation being achieved in this country? How would you like to see that yeah. turn out? Uh, the way it'll turn out, we're going to teach it for our children and then the next generations will just keep coming up and then they're going to start... Um, uh, wanting to, they're going to, Australian culture is the oldest living culture in the world and if you're an Australian, you're born in this country, why wouldn't you want to learn about, about your own culture in your own country? Mm. It's a multicultural country now anyway. It's not, it's not black and white anymore. We've got all sorts of people here now and that's what I love about this country. And the people that are coming in now, they're coming with other cultures as well. Um, so we're, we're sharing it together. And with the governments that are out there doing whatever they're doing right now, should just sit down with a few Aboriginal people and just have a bit of a yarn around a campfire, mm. get rid of the tables and the suits and the ties, mm. take your shoes off, put your thongs on and your shorts on and, you know, and just sit there and have a yarn, have a proper yarn. Because, you know, the younger people are watching us. We're meant to be the adults and meant to be the people that are leading the way. And I think some of the people that are doing it now, they're not doing it the right way. We need to just move around and do it together. 